Well, today is Earth Day, but at WBZ, it's Earth Week. We are going to look at the changes in our climate and what we can all do about it all week long. Now, in some cases, we're seeing the evidence of climate change happening in our own backyard without even knowing it's happening. History, though, can be a guide, as it is right now at Walden Pond. WBZ meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff shows us how. Swimming, kayaking, even field trips are all common at Walden Pond nowadays. But a walk around Walden Pond is a walk through history. Something Richard Primack is using to his advantage. Thoreau was a person who was just, just full of excitement and joy. A professor of plant ecology at Boston University, Primack is part of a team of researchers studying climate change in Massachusetts. One of their most valuable pieces of data is Thoreau's book, Walden. Thoreau made these very detailed observations, libraries of his observations on flowering time, leafing out, bird arrival time, ice out times in Walden Pond. And so these scattered tables of, of observations is, is really what the basis is for building on our own set of observations. As a naturalist, Thoreau's observations of flora and fauna were compulsive, spending hours in a cabin like this, jotting down a thousand words each day on what he saw because this is really the oldest data set that we know in the United States, the oldest sort of continuous running data set of observations of the timing of events in the spring. These springtime biomarkers paint a clear picture in New England. Winters are shorter and spring is coming earlier. Climate change is affecting Concord, Massachusetts. Wildflowers are flowering about 10 days earlier. Um, trees are leafing out about 14 days earlier. So we find the trees are somewhat more responsive than wildflowers. Spring is Massachusetts' slowest changing season, about 1.7 degrees Fahrenheit over the last 50 years. Spring's early arrival time may be throwing off the synchronicity of the ecosystem. Perhaps most concerning isn't what we see, but rather what we don't. When we started to look at flowering times of the plants, we kept encountering wildflower species that we couldn't find or that were extremely rare. So for example, fringed orchids or ladies' tresses orchids. So we kept finding wildflowers that were supposed to be common and that Thoreau had observed the flowering time of, and we couldn't find them. Premax team came to the conclusion that about 27% of all wildflower species from Thoreau's time in Concord are completely gone. Another 30% had declined in abundance. When we came out with these results, people were a little bit skeptical. Skeptical perhaps, but further data has proven Premax theories. Since we published our study, which was first discovered in, in Concord using the records of Thoreau, that people have found the same result elsewhere in New England and elsewhere in the Northeast United States. I know Thoreau is revered in literature circles. Should he be revered in scientific circles as well? He should be. In Thoreau's time and in the decades after his life, people criticized Thoreau. They said he is not a good scientist. We now know is completely wrong that Thoreau was, in fact, a very accurate scientist. At Walden Pond, meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff, WBZ News. Now, throughout the week, WBZ News will bring you unique stories about our climate here at home and all the way in Iceland. You're going to see those reports every night on WBZ starting at 5 o'clock.